Why not just come out and say it? I'm Michael Smirkanish in Philadelphia. Yesterday, the Supreme Court rejected special counsel Jack Smith's request to expedite review of Donald Trump's assertion of the defense of presidential immunity. And now, the case pending in front of Judge Tanya Chutkin in the district court in D.C. will be argued in front of an appellate court three-judge panel on January 9, and likely then before that court on banc, meaning the full appellate court, before probably going back to the Supreme Court. This makes it highly unlikely that Trump will be tried as scheduled on March 4, and that delay is precisely what Donald Trump was seeking. Last week, I commented on special counsel Jack Smith's unwillingness to acknowledge his motivation, that he's racing against the election clock in trying to get Trump to trial. The only reason that Smith had asked the Supreme Court to decide immediately whether Trump is immune from prosecution for events that occurred while in office instead of waiting for the normal appellate review was that Smith fears his prosecution might end with a Trump election victory. But instead of saying so, Smith, in his filings, spoke only in generalities. Quote, a writ of certiorari before judgment is appropriate when the case is of such imperative public importance as to justify deviation from normal appellate practice and to require immediate determination in this court. As to why the rush? Here's what Smith wrote in Seeking Expedited Review. Quote, if appellate review of the decision below were to proceed through the ordinary process in the Court of Appeals, the pace of review may not result in a final decision for many months. Even if the decision arrives sooner, the timing of such a decision might prevent this court from hearing and deciding the case this term. What he meant was that Trump could win the election and order all charges be dropped or pardon himself, ending this prosecution forever. Others have since made similar observations. Today, the Wall Street Journal, quote, Mr. Smith didn't offer a good legal reason for the justices to break normal appellate procedure and jump the queue over the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. His plea was purely political, so that he could meet the opening trial date of March 4 and get a conviction of Trump before Election Day in 2024. Many of you didn't appreciate when I explained all this last week. The social media was brutal. I was simply trying to detail how Smith has boxed himself in. But it did earn applause, my commentary from last week, and from one viewer, that would be Donald Trump, who posted on Truth Social a compliment of my so-called honesty and understanding of a very dangerous moment in the United States. I'm thinking he was trying to get me fired. And in their brief to the Supreme Court, Trump's lawyer cited my guest, CNN commentator and former prosecutor Ellie Honig, who said to me that any fair-minded observer would have to agree that Smith is acting based on the election calendar. When on Thursday Smith filed a reply to Trump's lawyers with SCOTUS, he ignored Trump's claim that the DOJ is acting with an eye toward the election. Instead, he vaguely referenced what's in the public's best interest and voiced a desire to have the charges promptly resolved. But why not just say... The public needs to know if a presidential candidate is a convicted felon before voting. Or that because a president cannot be prosecuted while in office, there's a risk that a Trump election victory will bring a potential four-year delay during which time memories fade. Witnesses could die. Or that absent fast resolution, any prosecution of Trump is going to run up against a DOJ rule not allowing conduct perceived as political close in time to an election. Smith won't say it because Trump would then claim confirmation that a prosecution guided by the election schedule is political. And viewed that way, it might be political, not necessarily partisan. Smith is no doubt concerned that Trump is going to win the election and either order DOJ to stand down or self-pardon. What remains to be seen is whether Smith will ever acknowledge the need for urgency due to the election. Or will he continue to beat around the bush and risk further delays? The Supreme Court is about to have more influence on a presidential election than any time since Bush v. Gore in 2000. There's the matter of whether January 6th defendants were properly prosecuted under a statute for obstruction of an official proceeding. And there's the state of Colorado challenge to Trump's qualification under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. And there's this case, Smith's challenge of Trump's assertion of presidential immunity in the federal case pending before Judge Chutkin. Scheduled to go on trial March 4, one day before 
Super Tuesday, March 5th, when 15 states cast ballots for GOP contenders. It is this case, I've long said, which stands the strongest possibility of Trump being tried before the general election, but now that scheduling is in doubt. And Smith's refusal to level with the public about why he's rushing to the courthouse, I think, diminishes the credibility of the DOJ. If the election did not loom large, there's no way Smith would be in such a hurry. You ought to say so. I want to know what you think. Go to Smirconish.com and vote on today's poll question. Should Jack Smith openly acknowledge he wants to try Donald Trump before the election?